Yeah, here we are again. Hello, hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got cut off there. And how came that uh, colostrum came, became part of your uh, of of this leaky gut syndrome study? I mean, who is who was in because who, uh, how came the interest in colost in colostrum? My personal interest came from my research in the area of exercise immunology. Mm -hmm. So my PhD was actually on investigating potential nutritional countermeasures to help better protect and maintain immune function um, mm -hmm. and lower the risk of upper respiratory illnesses and things like that in athletes or individuals involved in very heavy training um, or exposed to, to very strenuous, very prolonged physical stresses. Mm -hmm. So endurance athletes are a perfect example and a perfect model for that. And my PhD wasn't on, on supplements like colostrum, but as I moved into my first academic post and started exploring the literature a little bit more broadly, looking for other potential interventions or potential nutritional countermeasures that could help athletes maintain and or enhance their immune system. Um, I came across a couple of, of articles on bovine colostrum. Um, I had noticed a few even during my PhD and I kind of had given them a skim look and sort of dismissed them and I thought, oh, you know, this, this, this doesn't seem... Yeah. Um, it seems too good to be true, do you know what I mean? I was, yeah, yeah, I was, exactly. I was so quite sceptical mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I nevertheless looked into it a little bit further and I, I did a couple of research studies of my own and, you know, because I, I sort of managed the studies and I led the studies, I then had the confidence that they were double-blind, placebo-controlled, mm -hmm. well-planned, um, well-controlled studies and I saw um, some beneficial effects and from that point on I've, I've been sort of exploring it further. So. At the moment, I've, I'm kind of at the stage of knowing that there are definite beneficial effects mm -hmm. on some aspects of the immune system and certainly on um, self-reported upper respiratory illness symptoms. Um, and there's, there's quite a bit of literature on that now. Um, mm -hmm. So what I'm focusing on now, what I'm trying to do um, with my current and forthcoming studies is actually identify the mechanisms and the reasons as to why colostrum has these effects. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my aims for the immediate future. Do you have a what's your hypothesis why it is like this? I I think that one of the effects is that it definitely has beneficial effects on the gut. Mm -hmm. um, and from from the paper that I worked on with um, Professor Playford's group, we've seen that it has very, very significant effects on blunting the stress or the exercise or the physical um, stress-induced increase in gut permeability. Mm -hmm. And I think this can help to take some stress away from the immune system because when foreign substances are able to cross the gut barrier, substances that shouldn't normally be allowed to cross the barrier, they then have to be dealt with by the immune system. Mm -hmm. So by potentially removing that additional stressor, I think it, it frees up the immune system to focus um, more of its attention, if I can use a crude term, on, on, on its main job um, and defending the body against infection. Other things um, are, I believe, that some of the constituents, some of the bioactive components mm -hmm. within colostrum have direct priming stimulating or enhancing functions on many immune tissues and immune cells. Mm -hmm. um, this has actually been shown in vitro by a couple of groups showing, for example, that incubation with a um, medium containing colostrum actually enhances oxidative burst of mm -hmm. neutrophils or it enhances stimulated cytokine mm -hmm. production mm -hmm. of certain um, peripheral blood immune cells. and. The, the, the gap, I think, now, or the next step, is to identify why it has those effects. Mm -hmm. um, and there is some preliminary and tentative evidence out there that these effects are caused by the bioactive components within colostrum. Do you have any signs that it's improving the regeneration of the mucosal lining? Yes. Um, sort of. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, 
It's, I'm always looking for this answer. We have a lot of tumor patients under chemotherapy who take colostrum and uh, they don't have, they don't complain these gastrointestinal issues and they don't lose hair and things yeah. like this. A couple of things, um, for example, in the, in the March Bank paper from 2011, mm -hmm. um, we observed a couple of, of things that I think are related to, to that particular question. One of them was when gut cells or um, gut epithelial cells were grown up in culture and then incubated at 37 degrees, approximately equivalent to normal core body temperature, mm -hmm. and then incubated at 39 degrees, um, which is could be a core body temperature that you would see during strenuous exercise, certainly in a warm environment. And in the in the induction of heat stress, mm -hmm. um, the we, we saw an upregulation and an increased production of heat shock proteins. Um, mm -hmm. So in, so um, um, heat shock protein seventy, for example, which which is a kind of a defense mechanism, if you like, to, mm -hmm. to, to increase resistance um, against stresses like heat shock, oxidative stress, and so on. Um, also, the colostrum was shown to actually blunt the increase in apoptosis or programmed uh, cell death okay. that was seen mm -hmm. or that was induced because of um, chemicals that stimulate that or because of increased temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So taking those things together, I, I think that certainly suggests that colostrum can at least help to protect the gut cells and the epithelial cells. Mm -hmm. um, and personally, I, I, I think it will also help to increase the regeneration um, or, the, or the turnover of healthy cells. Yeah. I mean, there's so many more questions that have emerged from the work that I've done so far. And I really want to make a concerted effort to try and answer at least some of those questions. Um, and once we we know that there are there are definite outcome beneficial mm -hmm. effects to how athletes feel, um, to uh, lots of different aspects of immune function, and to their self-reported symptoms mm -hmm. of illness. Um, so at the moment, I'm trying to find the answer to the questions as to why, what is the specific mechanisms by which colostrum mm -hmm. confers or induces those effects and benefits. And then the next step after that, I suppose, is to explore the dose response mm -hmm. effects um, in a little bit more depth. Because a lot of what I've done now, I've chosen a dose that's commonly used in no, I... previous literature. But personally, I think that's a kind of safe excess to, to make sure that if there's an effect, we're able to see it. How Once high was the dosage? Effect, because... And we know the reasons why. Yeah, I just didn't get the dosage because it was an interruption. How high did you choose the dosage? In the studies that have been yeah. published so far, it was, it was 20 grams per day. 20 grams per day, yeah. 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 And it was relatively short term, so the good permeability study was two weeks, uh -huh. and the neutrophil function study was four weeks.